but basketball doesn't define me. Basketball has been great to me. For me, knowing when it's time to you know, step away from the game of basketball, the moment that this starts to feel like work, like a job that I don't enjoy, that's when it'll be time. In mid-January, the Lakers hit the road feeling upbeat. With their recent winning streak, they were regaining their stride. But the regular season was barely half over. That was a trip. <laughs> Long. You look at your schedule sometimes, and you can't believe how many games. There's an 82-game season, and you have to pay the price. You have to play all 82. No stranger to long seasons, Phil Jackson is in his 20th year as a head coach and has said this will be his final campaign. There's been certain cities that we've gone to, you know, that we're done, we don't have to visit there anymore, that he said, this is my last time coming to this city. You know, Phil is somewhat motivated to, you know, try and enjoy every moment uh, this particular season. Uh, with the possibly being the last that he, that he coaches NBA basketball. We welcome you to the American Airlines Center. A sellout crowd. Kobe Bryant and the Lakers' first visit to Dallas this season. Despite all of their ups and downs, the champs can always draw on the support of Laker Nation, even when they're on the road. I mean, they love watching us come play, man. You look around now, and we're here early. And, uh, you know, you see Laker jerseys. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, go, y'all. We're so, glad, we're so glad to have you in Dallas. Do you know that? This night would bring another chance to test themselves against a quality team, the Dallas Mavericks. And I think tonight is a meaningful game, actually, for both of us. We want to let them know that uh, to win the West, you have to come to us. And early on, the Lakers looked well on their way to making a statement, building a 10-point lead in the second quarter. But in the second half, the Lakers' momentum suddenly vanished, and so did their lead as Dallas came roaring back. Marion to the basket. Beautiful ball from Sean Marion. And an exclamation point on what will be a Dallas Maverick victory here tonight. After another disappointing performance against an elite opponent, Phil Jackson was left to confront more tough questions. It wasn't, you know, unbelievable turnovers. We had seven in that quarter. In the midst of his final season, Jackson, more than ever, has been able to find lighthearted moments, even in defeat. He's, he's calling it his last stand, you know, so I think he's getting his money's worth. He's going to leave the game. He might as well leave it with his opinions <laughs> about just about everything. You know what I'll miss is walking, you know, 250 yards from the bus to get to the locker room. That's one thing I'll miss. <laughs> None of this is really mean-spirited by Phil. It's almost, he it has a bemusement to the whole process. I sometimes put my foot in my mouth and say things that, you know, I wish I could take back at times. A lot of times it's the jocularity between the press and the coach that sometimes, you know, you say things off the cuff that sometimes cost you. <laughs> I'm not going to go any farther than that. You did. The OR meetings take place uh, daily on a breakfast schedule basis. Uh, so last night we got in at uh, 2 o'clock. So this is a 10 o'clock breakfast we have. He scored on three of 16 attempts on second chance points. Loss of that was a loss of that, a little bit. You know, it's a pretty good one tonight, Boston and Orlando. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that. They played so. Atlanta, they're, they're really, they played Atlanta. There's a lot of stuff we have to think about, uh, you know, what you do against that Boston defense. The next stop would be Denver where the champs had lost in their last four regular season visits. Though the Lakers have experienced their peaks and valleys over the years, Phil Jackson's leadership and demand for excellence have seen them through. He's such a huge perfectionist and understands the, the momentum of the game and you know, teaches the you know, little idiosyncrasies of the game. 
you know, I like to see that we're like on an even keel. That's kind of my moto operandi there. You don't see him getting up and really ranting and raving. There's a, a certain calmness about him. And I think that it translates to the players. The way he doesn't really panic, he's not uptight, he's not, you know, yelling at you, this and that. Not really giving you much indication of whether he's completely excited, completely upset, completely frustrated, or happy, if ever. I rarely give a motivational speech before a ball game. We talk about things, perhaps, that are encouragements and reminders. Watch the tempo of the game. You never want to stay within the tempo. Against the Nuggets, the Lakers did stay in control, led by a rejuvenated Pau Gasol. Extends with a left and puts it in. What a play by Gasol. It was a much-needed win over a Western Conference contender. But for a team in search of consistency, this was no time to be satisfied. I'd like to say it's as easy as just staying focused and continuing to grow, but for some reason we keep falling back after having a little success. Back home in Los Angeles, the Lakers prepared for their next challenge. But for Phil Jackson, who has navigated more championship journeys than any coach in NBA history, each game is just one more step in the long march toward their ultimate goal. My basic thing is how to prepare a team so that they can go into the playoffs in the best possible condition and mentally best frame of mind that they can be. You don't get them in a routine that becomes boring, I think, as a coach. And so things are just done differently or changed up or you have a variety or spice. Catch the ball, put it up against the backboard, they come down to do it. Something along the way that keeps them in tune and interested in what's going on. I think it's been genius how he's approached the season. Make sure that you're not clogging the lane. All right, you're clearing the lane. He doesn't want to put too much pressure on his players and have them, you know, so uh, geared up thinking about a three-peat that they peak too early. There's so much that has to happen for a season to go right. And there has to be enough attention in it to get your team to a place where they're building energy when they enter into the playoffs. Ooh, stay down. His voice and his tone, I guarantee you, will change. Come on, you bitch. Get ready, bro. The players will know that he's serious and that it's time to really focus at the task at hand. And the task for this season is to win the title that would give Jackson the fourth three-peat of his storied career. I think when it does get down closer to what counts, you know, playoffs, these players will, will look at it and say, this, this is going to be our last opportunity to play for this man. You know, obviously, if this is his last go, you want to send him out, you know, being the greatest coach ever, you want to send him out with a championship. Meanwhile, back east, the Celtics had gone 6-3 and three in Kevin Garnett's absence. He rejoined the team in mid-January and helped them beat one of their fiercest rivals. Victoria's town, Kevin Garnett. Garnett doing everything, playing offense and defense tonight in his return after missing the nine games for Boston. And with center Kendrick Perkins back from a knee injury suffered in last year's finals against the Lakers, Boston was now at full strength. Underneath to Perk and a chance for a three-point play. Welcome back, Perk! With their team intact, the Celtics were anticipating their January 30th showdown in Los Angeles. We know where we are now. We want to be better when that time comes. Coming up, the long-awaited matchup finally arrives. The Lakers meet the Celtics in their finals rematch, and the NBA's greatest rivalry is renewed. This is what we live for. This is what the game of basketball is all about, Celtics-Lakers. This is the game that brought everybody to the table, and believe it or not, all these years later, it's still happening.